Hi everyone, this is Perry Russo. I want to introduce you to my book called Walking On, Why Attitude, Servitude, and Gratitude Trump Everything Else in Life. You know, in life, when you get to be about in your 50s and your 60s, you have so much to offer. Um, there's so many things and so many life lessons that you learn, so many business lessons that you learn. All those experiences add up to just so many things that can help uh, every individual out there. And uh, and somehow, uh, the reason for writing this book was to help people learn how to, you know, uh, listen, how to channel their energy in the right way, how to have uh, the right associations and uh, those type of uh, attributes. Uh, so what I like to do is do a series of, uh, of the book, and that's uh, 10 chapters, and uh, kind of read from the book and do an overview, but, uh, you know, go through and explain some of the things and the reasons why I wrote them the way that I did. And uh, I th really believe that uh, this book will help a lot of people in so many different ways. And uh, in this case, uh, you know, I always believe that, uh, you know, your attitude is uh, just one of the greatest things you can ever have. You know, having a positive attitude, you hear so many uh, keynote speakers talk about or motivational speakers talk about, you know, uh, you know, having the right attitude. But attitude, I th really think, comes down from uh, how much faith you have uh, just beyond yourself. And, uh, you know, having faith in the same things that sometimes you can't necessarily see or understand, but having faith that, uh, you know, they do exist. And so I have a strong, you know, uh, faith in uh, my creator. And uh, so I always believe that, uh, you know, uh, may the faith of your attitude always enrich the lives of others. And servitude is, you know, one of those things in our in our lives that many people will step into and donate to either a nonprofit or you know, uh, some kind of organization that makes them feel good or donate their time at, uh, you know, at the hospital or donate their time at church. And, you know, and all those things, uh, we're not looking for anything in return, but what we are looking for is that satisfaction that we're, we're giving back to our community. We're, we're making our community better uh, than when we came in. And then just having that uh, gratitude, you know, at the end that, uh, you know, nothing really is um, is given, but we're we're so um, uh, gracious to understand that the things and and the pleasures that we do have, uh, we have to be so thankful for, and uh, and don't rely on the fact that you know others around us have to uh, that we have to satisfy so many other people. We're just you know I'm I'm just so grateful that I've had certain people in my life and certain experiences in my life you know, that have helped uh, shape me and uh, help uh, mold my career. And uh, so some of the things I've learned in the past, I want to pass on. One of the things I did develop uh, in the book, uh, being I've been in it, was in advertising for quite a few years, was uh, what I call the living barometer. And in, just like a regular barometer, you know, when uh, things get out of whack, when, you know, you kind of, you know, focus your life uh, in an area that really, it should, really shouldn't be, like uh, alcohol or gambling or womanizing or whatever the case may be, you know, uh, when those things are become paramount in your life and become the pinnacle uh, focus of what you do. Because I always say that uh, show me what entertains a person and I'll tell you who they are. That is so key to understanding what uh, this book is really all about. So again, I'm going to try to, you know, help you, you know, understand why, you know, your attitude is so important, why serving is so important, and why gratitude, you know, having that in your heart is such a uh, big thing. So, um, you know, many people have heard me say that uh, these things, you know, kind of trump everything else, uh, no matter what you do in life. And I truly, truly believe that. So, I dedicated the book uh, actually to uh, my father, uh, who died at an early age of 73, and uh, he had a, um, he was in for uh, bypass surgery and ended up having uh, multiple strokes uh, during the surgery, so uh, he spent 72, 73 days in ICU and, and didn't make it, And uh, but a lot of things I learned from my father, uh, you know, I really share in the book a lot of things I learned from my mother I share in the book and many things I share from my grandparents, aunts and uncles. All those experiences uh, wrapping up into, you know, kind of a, 
uh, chronology of events that have happened, you know, uh, in my life. And, uh, you know, quite frankly, it's, it's made me a much, much better uh, person. So uh, some of the chapters I'm going to uh, mention here is, um, and, you know, beyond this introduction to my dad and dedication to my father was uh, the first chapter is Begin to See Real. And then uh, the second chapter is I'm going to talk about confirming your, uh, your commitment uh, to life and uh, whatever is important to you and, you know, kind of leaning towards your life purpose. And, and the third chapter is your sense of self-worth. And that's so important that we understand that, uh, you know, no matter what level that we are in life, we can always enrich ourselves and get to the next level. And we have to think ourselves are worthy of getting there, obviously. And then a journey worth achieving uh, is the next chapter in chapter four. And uh, forecasting is your accelerate, uh, acceleration pedal. It's chapter five, which I really, really like that chapter. Hopes and dreams pay huge dividends. It's chapter six. And this is uh, one that I really, really like to talk about is live to give. And that's in uh, chapter seven. Equipping the next generation. Uh, these young kids today, I have a 19-year-old son that, uh, you know, is so exposed to the world around him and, and what life has to offer. And, you know, he's got a good head on his shoulders, but that's a huge chapter I'd, I'd like to, you know, kind of uh, go over with you. And then walking on, and sometimes in life we have to walk away from people and we have to walk away from circumstances or even a job when things really don't make sense anymore. And I can tell you that uh, in uh, uh, one particular job, you know, I experienced uh, in advertising where, you know, we had to do, they wanted, you know, a lot of us and our colleagues to do a lot of unethical things, which were beyond the scope of what I felt was uh, right or wrong. So I kind of drew the line and left. And, uh, and this is kind of like uh, right after that, after I wrote the book. And then uh, the joy of growing up Italian is uh, the last little, uh, I think, uh, three or four page I tied the book up as growing up Italian. I'm very, very proud of that. Uh, and uh, I always say that leadership uh, that's living to give is uh, paramount, you know. And so uh, at the end of every chapter, there's what I call living to give nuggets. And uh, each one of those little things, you know, you can refer back to. And, um, you know, it's it's something that every person, you know, has uh, that ability, you know, uh, to just look at things in a new way, have an open mind. And uh, that's uh, really where I want to try to get you is to be more open minded and uh, focus on, you know, where your life is at. Make some hard decisions and um, and then we'll go from there. But uh, this is just kind of a little uh, introduction of what I'm going to be doing uh, over the next several weeks, uh, going through uh, each chapter, and I'll get into, into detail and uh, about uh, you know some of the parts in the book that uh, I feel need some explanation. I'll I'll kind of stop and I'll kind of go through some of that, and uh, you know that's the the key of uh, growing. And I think that. You know, when you're, there's um, so much to offer when you're at an age, you know, in life where you've had plenty of life experiences, you've had uh, a home or two in your life, you've uh, experienced so many different things, you've worked for so many different uh, types of people, maybe you've had, you know, the luxury of uh, switching absolute careers, going like myself, going back to school late in life. I'm now currently 61, I went back to school when I was in my early uh, mid forties, actually, and um, got my degree, and uh, never did I think that I would ever carry, you know, a three six three eight uh, GPA. But uh, you know, when you're a little older, your your mindset's a little different, and you think about, you know, uh, why you're why you go back to school is to you know uh, get yourself you know that advancement. And uh, the shame is, you know, I always feel like I've told my son for uh, quite a few years, you know, uh, a man that can work with his hands as well as his mind is a complete man. You know, a man who can only work uh, and, and not be bothered, you know, only has an A game, so to speak, uh, in one direction, but can't uh, multitask and can't do a lot of different things is uh, really is is really uh, is being short-sighted, where I call it, it would be more of a myopic view of life, 
And uh, I love working with my hands, but I also love working with my mind. And that's where, you know, a lot of us get enjoyment is doing some of the things. You know, it doesn't it doesn't have to be, you know, a, a golf match or, you know, uh, being good at a game or, you know, playing cards or, you know, whatever that uh, luxury that you really enjoy. But uh, being able to do things yourself, that, that satisfaction that you get, from being able to have the knowledge to be able to build things. When I was a kid, you know, we were taught to look at things in 3D, physical things. And uh, I look at things and saying, instead of having to look at, you know, do I want to buy that or do I want to make that? And um, I just have the ability to be able to, you know, uh, make things. I'm a great woodworker, uh, have a little bit of an engineering mind, but also have a good... uh, caring heart and have a good intellectual uh, mindset to where, you know, I have a little bit of, you know, moral clarity that's uh, helped me to donate my time, especially to uh, boys to, uh, for big brothers, big sisters. I uh, started an organization so many years ago, Parents for Children. Uh, just so many things that I've done in my life that have well-rounded me. And uh, so those are the things, some of the things I want to share uh, during this time. And uh, hopefully you enjoy the series. Um, I appreciate you know any feedback that you want to give me, and uh, certainly uh, feel free to uh, send me a message anytime you like. And with that, we're going to sign off. Thank you very much.